Hello investors and welcome back. Let's talk about what's happening over the next few weeks. I want to talk about compliance. I want to talk to day traders, investors. I want to talk to the community out there. For all of you that believe in Sundial Growers, I want to catch you up on some of the drama that's happened in the past with this deal that they look to be interested in getting in now. And it sounds like from what Zach said, that they're not trying to change much, right? We just want you to be able to continue operating the way that you were. But Hexo Operations, did we always want to be in it? Did we want Xenobus as part of Sundial Operations? And this has been something that Zach has been working on for over a year. Let's take a look at the details and the timeline and let's get started. All right, so the first thing I want to do is take a look at the timeline for NASDAQ compliance. Now, this is a penny stock, highly volatile, highly risky. And for those of you not even in this player, maybe you sold your position and you're waiting to get back in, I would say long-term investors want to wait and day traders, we're going to talk about this in the charts. Now, 10 consecutive days, trading days, right? So before August 8th, now that gives us the first week of August and the last week of July for 10 consecutive trading days. Now, I believe a reverse stock split would be announced around, and I've said this, July 15th. Now, if we take a look at the calendar, what do we know that is happening on July 13th? Those are the CPI numbers. And if you believe that CPI has not peaked, watch my Fed videos. Very easy to find. Just look for Jerome Powell's face and I'll explain to you why I don't think CPI has peaked. So that news is going to come out. I think it's going to be bad. That puts us around July 15th where this is going to be low. We could get that announcement anywhere around this timeline or it could be even this week. Once we get into this week, we're getting into that 10-day window. And if you believe that economic conditions can change between July 5th and July 15th, then go ahead and start your position on SNDO. You don't believe that a reverse stock split could happen and that we're going to get that 10-day compliance by the 11th through, I would say, the 25th, You know, then, then you're good to go. Then that's a good investment. If not, Wait, this is all about timing and patience wins the race. There's other things happening in August, right? We've got the earnings coming up. We've gotten a glance of what those earning numbers are going to be. We only got one day and it didn't help out the share price. So we need to be able to report on a full financial picture for Sundial and anything is icing to the cake like legislation will happen in August. Nothing is going to be prioritized in July in my opinion. So we are committed to creating continuity for the Xenobus Group operations and employees and assisting Xenobus in good faith with its restructuring and this process has just begun. We'll provide more information, but I want to know before you tell me, Zach, I'm trying to get ahead of you so that way I know what's going on. Sundial steps into Hexo's operations and let's see what's, what, what this says, this press release that came out. I've got some things highlighted in here that I wanted to point out. Subject to the court's approval of the bid agreement and bidding procedures that will be sought on July 5th. So it looks like this is all just structural deal stuff. This is not going to be the approval of the floor price. This is going to be setting the floor price and the minimal acceptable bid and that this is a situation that someone was placed to monitor this. Uh, by Ernst and, and Young. And I know who that person is. I've sent them an email. So stay tuned. We'll cover that just in case you want to reach out to them too. And if you're a shareholder, you're curious about this process and you're not waiting for Zach to tell you what's going on. So what are we going to get out of this deal, right? Square footage, right? More supply. I mean, this is an environment in Canada where we don't need more supply. Then, you know, obviously it would just be continuity of the current operations which didn't, which were not going well. So why would this be struggling if the business was going well? So this is a failed business, but it does look like that uh, Zach has been pursuing this for some time. And the reason I say that, I'm about to show you in just a moment. Now, this is 108 million. So that's a really important number to know because we want to know if we're adding this at value, if we're getting a deal. So as of June 16th of 2022, the outstanding unpaid principal balance was $51.9 million. Now, Sundial to make a stocking horse bid for assets of the cannabis company Zinibus. And down here it says that Zinibus previously characterized Sundial's actions related to the debt because they bought this senior loan worth $58.9 million. Sundial invested 
back in December of 2020 as to coerce Zenibus into being acquired by Sundial. So I thought that was very interesting. And, you know, of course, I'm looking to understand why this business has not done well. So I'm really trying to understand Zenibus and merger talks with Sundial over alleged takeover try. I mean, that was there. And then here's what they're faced with, right? Why, why are they having trouble in the first place? Margin pressures caused by fragmentation of the overall cannabis industry. We know that there's trouble up north. So what I'm looking for is an opportunity to take advantage of these numbers being reported with Alcana. That's why I've been bullish on this in the past, but I've decided to take a pause, take a step back and wait for the timing to be appropriate before I really put some cash in here because I want to take advantage of this volatility that I believe is going to come up. Now we have to keep in mind that this is going to be a trade when it comes up. It's not going to be an investment because overall the cannabis industry is still transforming, taking shape, and you still need to understand how this is going to become a demand supply balance and not an oversupply up there. So restructuring still needs to take place. But of course, that catalyst that everybody's very interested in, that everybody believes they're going to make a lot of money off of, is legalization and how that's going to impact the share price. Now, generally speaking, general operations and financial performance, financial pressures resulting from debt. I mean, this is part of the situation that Sundial was placing the company in, right? So I thought that that was very interesting. And of course, you can go to Hexo, pull up their filings and see what they have there and find out that they've got a monitor that's overseeing the process. Actually go to the CCAA website and find out who that is. And that's what I did. So the file information, if you want to get that file number so that way you can track this, it's 511-06-1146-227. And if you want to contact the person that is responsible for monitoring the information that comes in and say, hey, what else do you have that you can share with me? There's an email address right here. So, you know, <laughs> go ahead and ask them why not. It's public information, right? So if we take a look at the sector healthcare and industry I mean, Sundial is still very liquid, right? I mean, typically it's trading at 100 million shares and it has to because it's so severely diluted. I mean, we're talking about 2 million or 2 billion shares issued. If this doesn't trade around 200 million or close to 100 million, you just don't see it move much. So right now we're sitting at about 37 cents. And over the course of the last few days, we've had a high of about 37 cents where I think it's going to meet a little bit of resistance. I mean, this could be peaking towards that RSI indicator over the 70, but check out our low right here. It got down to about 29 cents, but we'll take a look at the charts. So it's just important to know you've seen that spike right here of volume increase, and then we've seen an increase of price shortly thereafter. So just pay attention to volume because it still matters. And it's going to matter even more after reverse stock split happens. Now, the short position, it's increased, right? It's 62%. And you're going to see short positions taken out on everything in this market right now. It's just a way of people hedging their position, and it's completely understandable. Now, last time we talked about the charts, we talked about right here. On the technical analysis side for the RSI indicator, it was screaming by just from a TA side, and there was a lot of fear in the market. You know, this was a tough call to make. And I didn't say anything right here because we're just so close to a reverse stock split that I didn't anticipate this news being announced, but I do see meeting some resistance. If we zoom in on the four hour chart, you can see down here we had support at 29.72 and we're starting to get up above that 20 EMA. So the 20 EMA, when it touches it, it looks like it's getting support. So this could stay on an uptrend, but expect to meet resistance here at the 70 on the RSI. That's all I've got. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Check out your Moomoo account, your Weeble account, and your Voyager account in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.